Let's talk about seats. Uh, this has been my experience with seats. I've had the bike now for about 17 months and I've put about uh, 16,400 miles on the bike so far. And uh, as you can clearly see, I've experimented with a lot of seats. Uh, this has been my journey. I just want to share my journey with you. Hopefully this will help you out in making your decision. When choosing a seat, you have to keep a few things in mind. So these are the considerations that I had in mind, and you should take that into account when making your decision. What is the bike intended for? Is it going to be used for short rides or is it going to be touring? You also have to take into account the cost as well as your height. So basically, uh, are you willing to compromise the reach to the ground as well as reach to the bars? So keep that in mind. And also uh, the aesthetics. This is uh, something that is also important to me. What I was looking for was a seat that can allow me to ride up to 500 miles per day without any pain. I was uh, willing to accept a little bit of discomfort, but I did not want any pain. I didn't want a seat to affect my reach both to the ground as well as to the bars, and I wanted the seat to look good. Obviously, I had to compromise. Here's my experience so far. With the stock seat, I started to experience discomfort after 20 minutes. With the OEM custom forward seat, which is what is on the bike now, I started to experience discomfort also at uh, 20 minutes. With the stock seat and air hawk, I started to feel discomfort at 30 minutes. The next seat that I tried is the one that is currently on the bike. This is the forward seat, but I took it in and had it reshaped. So it's using the existing foam. However, it was reshaped and with some channels carved into it to give some tailbone relief as well as your sit bones. And I'll include the picture so you guys can see what I'm talking about. After reshaping this seat, the discomfort started to set in at about 45 minutes, and that cost me about $200 to achieve. The next seat that I tried was taking the OEM seat and replacing the foam that came with it with high density foam. And what that produced was being able to ride without discomfort for 60 minutes. And the cost to get the new foam installed on the new seat was $400. The next seat that came in is the Corbin seat as well as the Mustang seat. And I did extensive testing for thousands and thousands of miles. I've broken both of them in. I've taken them on long distance tours and uh, tested them out in all conditions with and without a passenger. And I'll let you know what is the most comfortable seat for me personally. We'll also talk about the passenger seat and what my passenger's experience has been. Let's get a little bit closer so that we can see how each seat individually looks on the bike. This is the forward seat that has been reshaped and carved for comfort. Notice this angle right here, as well as my reach to the bars relative to how straight my back is. This is with the Airhawk. Notice if there's any difference over here, as well as the reach. But as you can see, it's a little bit squishy and you kind of move around. You don't feel very secure on the bike, but definitely it improves comfort. This is the stock seat that had the foam replaced. Notice the angle over here, as well as reach to the bars, relative to how straight my back is. This seat, as you can tell, is a little bit more flat. The other one was a little bit more cupped, which felt a little bit better. But comfort-wise, because I replaced the foam on this, this was a lot more comfortable. This is the Mustang seat. And it feels so good once you sit on it, you guys. It's incredible. It just feels so good when you sit on it. 
the foam, the thickness, the cushioning, look at the angle. I'm still in the perfect riding position. My back is straight up. The reach is not affected. But keep in mind, look at this distance, okay? This distance is narrow. You cannot squish forward or rearward. So you're kind of stuck in one position. There's no adjustment. Keep that in mind. This is the Corbin. And take a look and see where I am. Look at this distance. Look, look at what happened to my hands. In order for me to hold it this way, look, I'm already leaned forward. So this definitely pushes you back in the seat. So you're further away from the bars. In addition, this angle is less acute. So definitely this does raise you up off the floor a little bit. Keep that in mind. But the benefits are that now you have a larger cup, which provides the support that you need for extended periods of riding and ultimate comfort. You can scoot forward a little bit. You can move to the rear, relax and hold on this way. So for a taller rider, the Corbin is going to fit a lot better than the Mustang will. The Corbin is going to raise you about half an inch to three quarters of an inch, and it's going to push you back about an inch or an inch and a half. Keep that in mind. So if you're a taller rider, this is going to be beneficial for you. This is what the stock seat looks like from above. I want to try to illustrate how narrow it is up front relative to the other seats. And also I want to demonstrate how easy it is to remove. This is the Mustang seat and this is what it looks like on the bottom. That simple. Do you see this distance over here? And to remove it, see how easy? This is the Corbin. And that's what it looks like underneath. And that's what it looks like installed. This is the distance over here. And you can compare it to the Mustang and the original. You'll see the width as well. To remove it, again, it's very easy, just like the OEM and the Mustang. This is the stock seat with the stock passenger seat, but I changed the actual backrest to match the color. Because the passenger seat is so uncomfortable, we were desperate. So what I ended up doing is trying the air hawk, the regular air hawk that I had, and put it over the passenger seat and used soft loops to tie it to the frame. And it actually worked, to be honest with you. This is the best look for the passenger and rider seat. It is the Mustang rider seat as well as passenger seat combo. And they do a great job. This is the most comfortable seat for the passenger and it's highly recommended. In terms of the ultimate comfort for long distance riding, talking about 350 miles to 500 miles with a passenger per day, this is the best setup that I found. The Corbin rider and the Mustang passenger because I personally do not like the look of the Corbin Duel. I just, I don't like it. I'm sorry guys, I think it's ugly. I get that uh, this is also ugly because one is black and the other one is brown, but I'm going to keep an open mind and uh, I know that uh, Mustang in the future is going to come out with a brown one. If they don't, I will end up changing the vinyl to brown leather to match the Corbin. 
To wrap this up, this is going to be a compromise. And the compromise for me is the Corbin. The Corbin is the winner in terms of comfort, overall comfort for long distance riding. This is what makes me happy is to ride for endless miles. When I go, I just go and I don't care. I keep going until I can't go anymore. So if it is up to 500 miles a day, better for me, right? So for me, I had to compromise on reach to the ground. I had to compromise on reach to the bars. I had to compromise with the looks as well as uh, the price and the overall winner based on comfort and comfort of the ass, basically. <laughs> comfort of the ass in terms of your sit bones as well as uh, tailbone. The overall winner is the Corbin. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions, please ask me. I'll be happy to share everything that I've learned through this journey. Have an amazing day, you guys.